Hello Raptors fans and welcome back to Raptors Report. I'm your host Julie and a lot has happened since we last spoke. Uh, my wife and I had our third child. Uh, the Toronto Raptors are absolutely terrible. The Raptors are terrible. Oh no. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic. I think that the Raptors will make the playoffs this year. I think that the Raptors will make the playoffs this year. Anyway, uh, the Raptors are in a pretty unenviable position moving forward into the new year, and in my opinion, they need to make a big change. Now, the Raptors front office has been putting off rebuilding for a number of years now, and the team does have talent, uh, but their asset cupboard moving forward is pretty bare. Uh, the Raptors hired a new coach to fix what they assumed was an issue with their development pipeline, Darko Ryakovich. For years, the Raptors have been finding and developing talent off of their bench, using that talent to grow an asset pool which helped them acquire talents in order to win a championship. Guys like Norman Powell, guys like Fred Van Vliet, guys like DeLon Wright, guys like Jakob Pertl. Some of them were traded uh, for Kawhi and for Marcus All, but some they kept and helped uh, grow and become the championship team. In the aftermath of that, they've seen less success. And I think that the front office saw Coach Nurse as unwilling to do the development that Casey had been doing. And when he left, I think that they found a replacement that they wanted to develop the talent that they had, or so they thought. Uh, so they hired Darko, he had a lot of development bona fides, uh, and they asked him, you know, to coach guys up. Well, in today's episode, we are going into the nitty gritty. We're gonna figure out what has gone wrong with that plan and what they need to do moving forward. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. The Toronto Raptors are on the wrong side of mediocre yet again this season. Despite a couple of players having good individual seasons, it's definitely not looking like the Raptors have the juice to make a run to the postseason. Despite the positive spin from the front office this offseason, the coaching change, the vaunted new offense, among other promises, things are not going very well. Obviously, things could change, as they often do in the NBA, and a second win could catch the Raptors' sails, propelling them in a different direction from the course they're currently on. But as the season unwinds and the sample size grows, it becomes easier and easier to see what a team is truly made of. And as the season marches on, the Raptors look every bit as bad as their record indicates. The team's offense is inconsistent to downright bad, and while the defense of the starting lineup is strong, the bench always seems to let the other team back in the door. Those holding out hope for younger bench players to step up, Grady Dick, Precious Achua, and Malachi Flynn, to name a few, have to be pretty disappointed by their play so far. Young players growing and improving off the bench often provide the boost that teams need in order to take a step forward, so the lack of development there certainly puts a damper on the hope that the Raptors could somehow turn the ship around. In the case of Grady Dick, writing him off this early in his career would be foolhardy, although the early results are not very good. For Flynn, and particularly Precious, this is starting to look like the last chance saloon. <laughs> Flynn has had a bit of a resurgence in his play, but the bar was on the floor so to speak, and his modest play has raised it ever so slightly. Flynn's approach to basketball is very meek which makes him less than ideal for a bench lineup that desperately needs an aggressive shot creator, and his size on the other end badly limits the team's ability to match up with other teams defensively. If Flynn's play moved the bar a little bit off the ground, Precious has taken the bar and plunged it into the depths of the Earth's crust. His play has been catastrophic, with frequent mind-bending mistakes on offense, his inability to hit shots, and his total fall-off on the defensive end. The place that he looked so strong just a few seasons ago. Precious has always been a question mark. A large athlete with audacity, some ball-handling skills, the possibility of a three-point shot, and a huge defensive ceiling. In his first year with the Raptors, he came into his own during the second half of the season, helping the Raptors reach the playoffs. 
His second year with the Raptors was marred by inconsistency and defensive regression, and in his third and current season, he has simply been downright bad. The question mark is slowly turning into a period, and I'm not sure how much time the Raptors can afford to give him if they're actually looking to win basketball games. So what is the solution? Should the Raptors spend assets to upgrade the bench unit? Should they try to adjust minutes and hope for the best? For the first question, I would simply say no. Unless the Raptors can somehow add a player with current and future value, the team is simply not good enough to make a short-sighted move. The minutes question is one that the Raptors should implement sooner rather than later, but it does not seem like an elixir that will cure all of the team's woes. The final option is the most controversial. Make some big trades, get younger, and go from there. Whatever the front office set out to do this season, the Raptors definitely look like they should be sellers. Siakam, OG Ananobi, and Gary Trent Jr. are all in the final years of their contracts. Siakam and Ananobi have value around the league as versatile, multi-tool forwards. Gary, after a disastrous start to the season, has begun to round into form, but his upside as a player looks much lower than it did a few seasons ago. He appears to be an off-ball guard who can shoot and not do a whole lot else. The Raptors also have other assets. Pirtle has had a bit of a down season this year. That said, he's a good defender, a great finisher, and an underrated playmaker. He's on a long-term, reasonable contract and has recently entered his prime. Dennis Schroeder is having a okay season, statistically, and should be able to get some value back. Chris Boucher is a decent bench player who other teams might value. The only true untouchable on the roster should be Scotty Barnes. Barnes has had a great start to the season, but the minutes he's played with the bench have hurt his production considerably, and he's still finding his way as a pro. With that said, he's 22 years old on his rookie contract and a good stepping stone for the Raptors if they decide to rebuild, so that they're not starting from square one. In terms of other players to hang on to, OG Ananobi would be a decent bet. Although he is in the final year of his deal, he's still only 26, and if the Raptors free up enough cap space, they could give him the contract he's been looking for. Siakam is one of my favorite Raptors of all time. He's a great player who was a big part of the Raptors' first and only championship. By all accounts, he's a great guy and a true pro. The front office never truly invested much in trying to build around him, kind of half-assing that part while also kind of half-assing the development side of things, leaving the Raptors stuck in the middle. With that said, Siakam is almost 30 and deserves to be in a better situation than a mediocre team struggling to tread water in the Eastern Conference. If the Raptors can find a team that needs a playmaking forward with excellent interior scoring and distribution skills, Pascal is a guy who can take a middling team and turn them into a contender. With the struggles of the Golden State Warriors, they might be a team to keep an eye on. They have some interesting prospects in Moses Moody and Brandon Podzemski, and they badly need size at the forward spot and veteran production. Siakam's contract situation will limit how much the Raptors can ask back for him, but getting value for his expiring should be a priority so that they don't run into a Fred Van Vliet situation where they get left holding the bag and nothing else to show for it. Complicating the rebuild scenario somewhat is the Raptors' pick situation. The Raptors, in exchange for Jakob Pertl, traded this year's draft pick, Top 7 Protected. The good news is that Pirtle may be worth more than what he was traded for. The bad news is that the Raptors probably want the pick to convey in this year's draft because this year's draft isn't very good. What that means is that the Raptors probably don't want to fully bottom out. What's strange is that even if the Raptors trade away a very good player like Siakam or Pirtle, the team might not be much worse off due to a very redundant and frankly silly roster construction. Perhaps a trade that adds some depth off the bench and more shooting could maintain the Raptors' mediocre trajectory while making things a little bit more palatable in the long run. The future of this club appears quite murky, and like most Raptors fans, I hope for some clarity soon. And that's this week's episode. The Raptors have really put themselves behind the eight ball. 
They have a lot of talent, but a lot of it is not under contract for next season. And this season, uh, things are not looking too hot. So I think that a shakeup is probably in the best interests of the team. But I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. Um, should they fully blow it up? Who would you keep and who would you trade? Also, what do you think of Darko Ryakovic? Is he really screwing things up? Is it not his fault? There's a lot of differing opinions that I've been hearing. Not a lot of it has been very positive, but can you really blame the guy? Um, I want to hear from you about that. And I'm always interested in talking to other Raptors fans, uh, be it here on YouTube in the comment section below, or on Twitter or X or whatever, uh, at Raptors Report. You can reach me there. I'm always talking about the Raptors uh, and I'd love you to come and join me. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Raptors Report, your source for in-depth Raptors content.